I'm going to show you how your problems are not wrong. I know they feel like crap. Mine do too. But they're not pathologies to just try to zap away. They're meaningful and purposeful processes designed to wake you up to something new. Increase your self-awareness and expand who you are. They're your personal growth trying to happen. Your problem has an inherent purpose. And even though it messes up your life, that's not its purpose. Its aim is to make you grow. With the right tools, you can discover how even your worst problem is your doorway into personal transformation. Now, if you think about it, this is the exact opposite of what we've all been taught. Everything you hear about mental health, relationship issues, work problems, and so on, centers on trying to get rid of the problem. We're really big on quick fixes, suppressing symptoms, bypassing or smoothing over conflict, and generally trying to make it all go away. So claiming that our problems are meaningful and purposeful is the antithesis of what we've been told. You know, be happy, pull it together, don't be so sensitive, be normal like everyone else. And if you're depressed or anxious or phobic, uh, you need to get rid of that or you need some medication to mask it. Of course, nowhere is this conquer the problem attitude more prevalent than in America. It's part of our pioneering, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, industrious spirit. But the one place this doesn't really work is with our everyday life problems. Rates of depression and anxiety have skyrocketed in the last five years. And the more we try to tamp it down with potions and pills, the worse it gets. Now, don't get me wrong. Some folks claim their medication is life-saving. But I'm going to show you a way more effective and healthy way to deal with your bad states of mind and your messed up life situations. Now, saying that problems have something valuable in them flies in the face of everything in conventional psychology and psychiatry. They view problems as illnesses to cure, not as meaningful processes to unfold. Even the more holistic approaches to therapy tend to view our emotional wounds like one would view a physical wound as an unfortunate trauma that requires interventions to make the pain go away. Your wounding is viewed as a poison for which you need the medicine. But this is all backwards. You see, the poison is the medicine. I know it's so paradoxical, it sounds like it makes no sense. But hang in with me and I'll show you how your wounding is the doorway to transforming your life on the deepest level. This is actually an ancient idea and I've updated it to modern times. The first healers, medicine men and women, were called shamans. They were really the first psychologists. The term shaman means wounded healer. It also means one who knows and one who sees in the dark. In ancient tribal cultures, a person afflicted with what we'd call a mental health problem was viewed as a potential healer because their wounding was considered a calling to leave their everyday normal existence and dive into the spirit world, or what we'd call their psychology or process. The poison is the medicine. Which reminds me, later in the fall, I'm going to release a new video and single called Medicine Gun. The words in the chorus go, my poison is a medicine gun. Bang! Shooting me full of changes. That's right. Problems are purposefully designed catalysts for your growth and expansion. Or, put more succinctly, your problem is your process. Everything in your life, including your worst pain, aims ultimately at helping you transform who you are. It's not just about making your symptoms disappear or even healing the wound. These are important things to do, 
But there's something much deeper and profound going on when a problem enters your life. It's your calling. It's your sign that transformation is trying to happen. The problem itself is just the seed, the impetus, the agitating force to get you onto the path of change, growth, and consciousness.